can everyone hear me in the back? Is that good? Okay, cool. Um, I'm a bit sick, so I'll try to be slow and uh, speak clearly. Um, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna talk about PyPy and the future of the Python ecosystem. This is kind of a, like utopic talk, I would say. Like it's my perfect future when like there's unicorn everywhere and stuff like that. Um, so you can find me on social media stuff if you have questions and stuff like that. Um, so um, day to day, I'm a software engineer at least. We're hiring. Um, come talk to me or to people who have list t-shirts around. Um, have been a PyPy contributor for about four years, I think. Um, I've worked on, the first thing I worked on was on a Google Sum of Code project, uh, which was a Siphon backend for PyPy. Um, that was um, a failure, um, which doesn't mean that it's impossible to have a Siphon backend for PyPy, but that particular approach was not good. Um, I've worked also on NumPyPy. Um, I was paid to work on NumPyPy thanks to the community, so that was really awesome. Um, thank, thank you to the community. And um, I have a pet project called PyMetabiosis, and well, you might know what it's, what PyMetabiosis is if you stay until the end of the talk and you don't run away. Um, so this talk is about how can we get better implementations. Um, we all love Python, so we don't want to throw away libraries and language features. Um, so yes, let's take a snapshot of the current situation. So basically, everybody uses CPython, um, but CPython has quite a few deficiencies. Um, bad performance is one massive deficiency, and the GIL is also, well, the infamous GIL is one of the other deficiencies. Um, and PyPy, a few people use PyPy quite a bit, and um, PyPy has great performance, and PyPy STM is getting there, so that's cool. And according to PyPI stats, at least, um, <coughs> other implementations are well, virtually unused, like hundreds of downloads every month or something like that. So let's make a quick poll. Um, who has used CPython before? <laughs> okay. Um, who has used PyPy? Just like typing PyPy in a prompt or whatever. Yeah. Okay, quite a bit. Um, who has used Python? Iron Python, quite a few people. Okay. So, and in terms of other languages, um, we have fast languages that weren't designed to be fast, like um, JavaScript or PHP, and they are fast now. Um, there's also other languages like Go that don't have a gale and now are like getting used, and languages like Lua and Julia as well. Um, so yes, for example, PHP wasn't designed at all for performance and they managed to have um, good performance with um, HHVM, which Facebook uses and other people. Um, like if, he, if PHP can do it, we can do it. Um, <laughs> so yes, what's specific about Python? Because PHP um, or even like JavaScript, everyone uses a fast JavaScript runtime these days. Um, so why can't you use PyPy today? Um, it's pretty hard to switch between implementations because you have tons of C extensions and C extensions don't work that well on PyPy. Um, so why can't we improve CPython? Um, C extensions make um, assumptions on how um, the Python runtime behaves um, and that's not good because the assumptions that it makes is, well, basically slow implementations. Um, PyPy, well, no C extensions, or kind of, you can use some of them. Um, so yes, if you, if you treat like the Python ecosystem, you know, like kind of market view, you would say that like the C extensions are lock-in, it's called in market theory, so basically you use C Python, you use C extensions, and then you're stuck. Um, and yeah, more competition uh, would benefit everybody. Um, even like if something tomorrow beats PyPy, like I'm not gonna complain, I'm a Python user, so if something better than PyPy shows up, it would be great. Um, and yeah, basically, if you write on 
Python implementation tomorrow that covers 100% of Python. Um, if you don't have C extension support, then your um, implementation has to be really, really attractive. So that's not great. Um, so yes, why can't just PyPy or JSON or Iron Python implement the C API? Um, first of all, even if you implement the C API, it's not enough because, for example, Cython um, use um, bypasses the runtime and just looks inside structures and stuff like that. Um, they have a PyPy mode where they like don't do that anymore, but they do that on C Python. Um, and even if you implement the official API, um, you have to use or emulate reference counting. Um, reference counting is kind of slow, and if you were at Larry Hastings' talk um, yesterday, um, you you can you notice that well, having reference counting make the gil, removing the gil practically impossible. Um, so there was this experiment with a patch that removed the gil on Python 1.4. It was revived by David Beasley a few years ago, and yes, it was much slower than um, regular C Python. So yes, basically you, you have to choose between performance and concurrency on one side and the C API on the other side, which is pretty bad. So um, I, I wonder, like other languages have, they have bindings to other library, to C libraries, right? Like they don't live in their like closed world. They use C libraries. So um, I found two families of C API out there. Um, there's the JNI V8 and Lua Julia um, families. Um, Lua Julia is kind of a more of a stack-based um, C API. If you use Lua or Julia, you probably know what I'm talking about. And JNI and V8 use um, handles, which is also what CFFI uses. Um, and these don't make assumptions on the runtime because, well, for example, JNI, the Java is already, the JVM is already fast, so their C API is based on a fast runtime. Um, so can, could we have something for um, Python? We can. Um, you, would start, you would still need to like remove um, ref counting and stuff like that, so that's not many changes, but well, those are pretty massive changes for people who write C extensions. Um, the C API, you can have your own C API with CFFI basically, so you can already do it today. Um, and yes, it's a big political problem, so good luck convincing people with mass massive C extensions to use that API. Um, and yes, if, you, if we were to go down that path, um, we would have to have the two APIs on CPython so that people could slowly port their code. Um, I think it would be possible to like have an incremental um, way of moving APIs. Um, so yes, I've spoken about like why everything is bad. So um, where does PyPy fit in this? Um, PyPy is the most flexible implementation around, most, mostly because it's written in R Python. So you can switch, for example, the garbage collector easily, and you can make a lot of changes um, pretty quickly. So PyPy has a JIT. Um, you can go on speed.pypy.org. Um, you will show that it will show you that it's seven times faster on our benchmarks, which doesn't really mean anything. Um, it means that it's faster on our benchmark. It doesn't mean how fast it will be on your code. Um, so it, uh, the JIT allows PyPy to compete with other fast gen dynamic languages like JavaScript and family. And um, one of the principles of the JIT is that you pay the cost for what you use. Um, if you have, uh, if you use C Python, um, you need Python has a lot of overhead if you use um, naive implementations like C Python, and the JIT can remove that overhead of stuff that you don't use. For example, um, integers are objects. Most people um, don't use integers as objects; they just use them as regular integers. So PyPy is able to remove the cost of integers being objects. Um, other um, frame introspection is another kind of um, overhead. So um, this, I have a demo that um, 
is pretty, well, we've showed it at quite a lot of conferences, so you may have seen it. Um, this is a program written in pure Python that does um, edge detection. Um, this is this program running on um, some random video of someone skiing, and um, so you can see that um, it's fairly slow. Um, don't believe the negative average FPS, that's not possible. Um, <laughs> so it's 0 0.41 average FPS. It's, it's even slow to quit, so that's not very interactive. Um, let's try it on PyPy now. That's fast. Um, so yes, <laughs> 250 FPS on my laptop. Um, I can also show that I'm not lying to you, so I can use my webcam and like <laughs> that's real time. Um, my webcam is slow, so it's 15 FPS for some reason. Um, it would be much much faster if I had a decent webcam. Okay, so yes, I talked a bit about CFFI. I've mentioned it. So uh, we all like to interact with. C code. Um, C code is not nice, but it's or it's a standard. Like you have to be able to call things that implement the C ABI. Um, so most people know that most people who know CFFI know that you can call C code uh, with CFFI, but you can also expose Python functions to C. So kind of in a C API way, you can um, embed PyPy and expose functions. Um, to C world um, using CFFI. And um, it's also very, very fast on PyPy. Um, benchmark it, but it's really fast. And yes, you can do basically everything you can do with the C API. It's like a different way of thinking, but you can do the same thing. Okay, and well, STM is a work in progress. Um, we're removing the gil, that's kind of exciting. Um, and you don't have to use Threads and locks. Um, threads and locks are a mess, so that's good. You get all the benefits without getting all the bad stuff. And yes, as opposed to using multiprocessing, you can use uh, memory between threads. So, okay, I said that, well, PyPy basically can't implement the C API fully, but um, there are workarounds we can have. So, for example, we could have a bridge between PyPy and CPython, and then tell Python, like, this is the method I want to call, do it on your own, and call that extension. Um, and with that, we could um, basically, yes, bring the scientific stack to um, PyPy. And well, it would be great if we had that, so I'm gonna show you that we have that. Um, Okay, so I implemented something called PyMetabiosis. Um, it's just a regular Python module that works on PyPy. I'm going to prove you, prove to you that it's PyPy. Um, what is it? Platform. Yes. Um, the Python implementation. PyPy. Um, so let's import a CPython module. Um, let's import um, matplotlib.pylab. Um, let's say same base to PyLab. Uh, PyLab is pretty slow to import in general. That has nothing to do with uh, the bridge. Um, so let's start plotting some stuff. Um, Not very fancy stuff, but yeah. so matplotlib usually doesn't work on PyPy. It's a C extension that we don't support, and with that, we get C extensions. Okay, and in the case where, um, well, PyMetabiosis is kind of a, like, workaround, uh, we also have, like, 
better um, alternatives that you don't require you to use PyMetabiosis. For, no, for example, for NumPy, uh, for NumPy, we have NumPy. Pi. For LXML, we have LXML CFFI, which is kind of a port, basically, of LXML um, from Cython to CFFI. And for PsychoPG2, we have PsychoPG2 CFFI, and people um, regularly write bindings for um, different libraries for CFFI. So as a summary, um, we can do a lot of a lot better than what we're doing right now. Um, PyPy is working on it. Um, making an alternative implementation friendly is ecosystem is pretty hard. Like the C extension API is not really going away, but at the same time, it would allow us to have a much better ecosystem. So yes, thank you. Any questions? Don't be shy. You know, just one stupid, maybe kind of not uh, related question. There are no stupid questions. <laughs> so, uh, in Python, you basically all um, all object uh, that the referencing like. It, Getting attributes from objects costs something, mm -hmm. and when PyPy compiles it, like if you have a uh, a chain of four the references, like from this object get this, and then get this, and then get this, uh, does Py PyPy optimize that a lot, or does it just do uh, the, this this the same chain of the ref the referencing but in assembler? Well, you still need two differences to reference all these pointers, but you can do it much more efficiently than if you were doing. So um, Python objects are um, implemented as dictionaries on C Python. So like you have to hash your attribute and then like, look it up in a dictionary and stuff. Uh, we don't have to do all that stuff in PyPy. It's just one array lookup, so it's much more faster. OK. Anyone else? So um, you said in the last slide, help's needed. How can we help? Um, well, <laughs> um, well, for example, um, write bindings for your favorite library to CFFI, for example. That's a nice way to do it. Um, yeah, bringing more libraries and like lowering the barrier to entry is the thing that's like you don't have to be a PyPy expert to do that. So that's definitely the best way to contribute, I would say. So C CFFI is compatible with PyPy. So what's the catch of CFFI extensions? So if it's so great, it allows you to do so many stuff, then why isn't ev everybody switching to CFFI from standard C API? Well, I don't know. As the crowd, I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, but people already use C extensions a lot. CFFI is kind of newish, so yeah, but it isn't slower or something like that. There is no on catch C on C Python. It's slower, but like it's C Python. What do you expect? Uh, what's the state of Python 3 on PyPy? Apparently it's uh, 3.2.5, right? Um, yes, it's, we have support of 3.2. Um, we are slowly reaching 3.3. Um, it's kind of, like, it's not that hard, so, like, people can easily come and contribute, so I'm definitely, like, making a call for people to help porting to Python 3.3. So um, you can come to the sprints, for example. What would you estimate? How long could it take to Python 3.5? It's f like a fully volunteer project, so when it's done. Like Thank you. Thank you for the talk. Uh, do you think uh, a bridge-like solution can work in the future? 
So we have thousands of C extensions and we cannot just get rid of them. Uh, and But we would like to migrate to PyPy and we can, I mean, we can wait until everything is migrated to CFFI, but it's not likely to happen that soon. Yeah, so that's why I wrote that bridge. It's like, it's a lot simpler, like you can get like 90% probably of the libraries working directly. Um, there you won't get any speed up from like those libraries in particular on PyPy. The rest of your code will get faster because it's PyPy, but like this is using CPython, so it's as slow as CPython. And there's some overhead in using the bridge. But yes, if you want compatibility with C extensions, like right now use the bridge, it's like it's ready, well, it's not ready, but like use it and report bugs. Um, and yes, that's like usable, not in five years, but like right now, today basically. Um, thanks for the great talk. Um, how do your bridge works internally? Like you have two, interpreter, two interpreters running at the same time? or Yes, you have, um, um, CPython, uh, PyPy basically runs CPython and they run in the same process. So you can um, efficiently share memory. For example, NumPy arrays, um, well, it's not implemented yet, but in the future, we can have um, passed NumPy array to CPython, well, between CPython and PyPy without doing any data copy, for example. So that's pretty efficient. Um, we don't have to do um, RPC calls and stuff like that. So yes, it's in the same process. And it's Um, anyone else? Otherwise, thanks again, Romain. <laughs>